So, you know, when you're, if you take a step back, you have somebody coming to you, they've been working within JavaScript, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React. They're relatively skilled. They have experience with SQL so they could launch full stack applications. Um, what's your advice to them to go speak to that first coffee shop? You know, to, to go get their first custom dev project. Ah, yeah, that's interesting. It's, um, well, the first thing I say is, I tell people, you just got to be, it's, it's old market. You got to put up a website. You gotta, and I tell people, even if you're selling yourself as a coder, make sure that website looks really, really good because it's going to judge your coding skills based on the aesthetics of the site, strangely enough. So you have to have that in place. Okay, you got that. Then you start telling people, hey, by the way, I build sites. I do this. I do that. Whatever it is that you do. And you just start networking, talking to people. And then one thing you could do is you go to like Google Maps and coffee shops and, and then check, see if they got any websites or maybe they got a really old website, you know? Uh, and this, it's, 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 you just gotta, you gotta put in the time, you know? And so when you go approach them, you wanna try to approach them with a warm lead, you know, you don't want to, you know, you don't, you could go into a place and say, hey, do you need a new website? Chance of that being successful, one in 200, right? So you can do it and it will eventually work, but if you can warm up the leads by filtering uh, who might be the better uh, targets, uh, that is a much better approach. Also, just like um, if, let's say you want to deal with a local small business and you can write um, some, SEO aware articles, if you will, uh, that 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 local small business owner might find you via Google search, and that happens quite a bit even today, uh, even we, on social as well. Can we touch on that a little bit more? So I have a ruthless. I've been known to be a little harsh about this with all of our students. One of the things I preached them, and just for a little bit of context, right? We have a lot of students that. Uber drivers, warehouse workers, teachers, um, everything along those lines, maybe between jobs, right? None of them have any formal marketing experience, anything along those lines. So the first thing I tell every single student is typically when they get freelance projects, one of the things people say is, hey, I need a website and I wanna be able to be seen online. And so they tread into this category of SEO. And the first thing I typically tell all of them is don't fucking try it. And the reason why I say that, I say this, I, by the way, I do this very dramatically. Um, I come from the marketing world and one of the things I always tell them is like, hey, right, if you're going to sell yourself as an SEO person, first and foremost, understand people are going to have expectations, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you ever mention SEO, you better sure shit have an idea of what you're talking about, right? And you bet like it can't be I watched a YouTube video. You need to have mm -hmm. something to really support you from that standpoint. Uh, what suggestions, because it, it does seem like though, and I, I really don't have a, a deep knowledge of it, so I, I kind of want to open this up to you. Uh, it does seem like though there's a lot of validity within when you're building a site and making it more, I guess, searchable and maybe what something that would help with SEO. Can you speak to the technical side some maybe of some benefits of that and maybe just some baselines if you have that experience to be able to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So. Um, traditionally, SEO was about making the site more searchable. This is largely antiquated now because if you design the site with just normal, the, the ways that we design sites these days, uh, your sites are SEO already. They're, in terms of the code and the structure of the sites, they're very searchable these days. Back in the 90s when this whole SEO profession came about, the sites were not searchable for two reasons. A, they mm. were the way they were constructed were they were uh, a black box for the Terrible. search engines yeah. and B, uh, the search engines weren't very good either. So uh, th that's gone. So when I say SEO today, it's more about web marketing. So just, you know, I, you know, instead of trying to use special keywords and research keywords, and you could do that to a certain extent, but I never, I've never believed in gaming the system because you're always going to get caught in that way. Mm. Just, I always, just write for your audience. So if you want to attract people who are interested in, I'll just use the coffee shop as an example. If you want to attract people who are interested in coffee, just write honestly about your coffee shop and what different types of coffee and how you prepare coffee. And mm. the engines will find that, you know? And there's a few, few basic rules, like stay in your playground. So if you have a site 
about coffee, don't link to uh, a site about the, the latest Audi or Porsche coming out. You're going to dilute your, your value there. Um, have your social, social media is huge, of course. So have your social media populated with coffee-related content. And there's basic strategies. You can go on for a while. Like, for example, if you want to, Google favors its own uh, platform. So if you put out videos on coffee, put them on YouTube and then embed those YouTube videos in your site. Uh, those type of things, you know? Uh, do you want me to go on more? Or? No, yeah, if you, if you have more, feel free to. This is, this is really practical. Yeah, um, it's just, and also, again, it's psychology plays a big role in this. So, you know, going, for like you've, there's this book that was put out in the 90s called The Long Tail, and it was about long tail economics. And I got the book when it was first published, and I saw on the back cover of the book, Google's, the Google founder said, this is going to have a heavy influence on how we design search. They said, oh, that's cool. So then I designed all these long tail sites, and sure enough, it, the rankings went up. And long tail only refers to, the, it's, just, it's just about niching down, essentially. So you want to target, you, the more niche that you are in your, uh, we'll call it SEO for, for the sake of argument, the more long tail that you are in how you target, the more likely you're going to get the, the audience that you want. So if you, you know, the basic mm. example, the classic example, you type in coffee shop, you know, you're going to compete with every coffee shop in the world. But you go to coffee shop in uh, North Montreal, boom, all of a sudden the competition is going to be far, far less. You're going to get less traffic, but you're going to get the traffic that you want. You know, people mm. are interested in coffee shops in Northern Montreal. Who cares if somebody, if you put, if you put in, uh, if you, you get a high ranking or you get search results for coffee shops in California and you're in Montreal, it's useless to you. Absolutely. It's kind of like saying, what's the best vanilla latte in Denver in general and trying to get somebody yeah. to come up from that standpoint. Yeah. That makes it's a lot of sense. stuff, right? But it, it, a lot of the SEO rules, a lot of the web marketing stuff is very marginal, meaning that they, they can have some impact, but if you just stick to the core principles, that's like 80% of it's the old Pareto principle, the 80, 20, you know, the 20% gives you 80% of results. So you learn this as an entrepreneur as well. You concentrate on that crucial 20% mm. and you, you don't waste your time on the marginal stuff.